Heat transfer module number seven. Why haven't you assumed the configuration where thickness of steel pipe could also come into play because heat also travels through the thickness of steel pipe and the temperature of pipe on the inner surface won't be the same as the temperature of pipe on the outer surface of steel pipe? Okay, so the question there is, why am I not dealing with the resistance of the pipe itself? The thickness of the pipe um, having some resistance to heat transfer. Anybody want to take a shot? Just like without the context, without some of you may have looked at this problem. Some of you guys may be earlier in the process, but just thinking about it, water flowing in a steel pipe with insulation around it. And I've ignored the uh the resistance of the pipe itself why would i do that can on un unmute or type in the chat whatever's easier um so if the water's been flowing for a while it should have evenly heated the pipe yep if it's turbulent flow and it's been flowing for a while there's been a lot of opportunity for heat transfer and what about the temperature on the inside surface of the pipe versus the outside surface of the pipe do you expect there to be some thermal gradient there? I would assume the gradient would be so minor in the grand scheme of things, assuming it's the thin pipe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the thickness of that pipe and the fact that it's steel, um, it's highly conductive. So the thermal conductivity is very high, which means that the thermal resistance is very low, which is why we use insulation, of course, because the insulating properties of steel are poor that's not we, we're using it for other reasons for its strength and uh durability but then we wrap it in insulation so that it has the thermal properties that we want it to have as well so that's the that's the reason for that and my sort of guidance for uh the individual who asked this question is i would invite you to calculate not every time don't do this on the pe exam but just while you while you're practicing while you have the luxury of time you're just working through problems take a shot at calculating what the resistance of that pipe would be actually figure it out get the thermal conductivity the thickness and work through it and i think what you'll confirm yourself for yourself is that it is absolutely negligible and that will be the last time you ever calculate it when you have water flowing in a metal pipe and um so that, that's why you're able to ignore it and just jump straight to the insulation which has tremendous insulating properties and we would never want to ignore that uh, it's there for the very reason of providing resistance um and just a related this is kind of related unrelated i know you probably threw this sketch together quickly and i, I don't mean to be critical uh but just in terms of the relative thickness of the pipe as you've drawn it you have the pipe looking like it's two or three times thicker than the insulation when in reality the pipe is very thin I mean, if it's schedule 40 i mean there's different schedules maybe it's something like a quarter inch or or maybe a bit more but it's quite thin and the insulation could be um, an inch to several inches in many cases, depending on the specific requirements. So that uh, that relationship is going to be inverted. So more green and way less gray. And uh, yeah, that'd be a, a better picture. And then to the second part, under what circumstances should I assume eight inches nominal diameter instead of eight inches outer diameter? Um, again, we're looking for the dead giveaways. So if it says nominal in the problem statement if it says um what else do they sometimes say if it says standard weight that's another keyword uh if it says schedule 40 steel then in all of those cases you want to go to the actual schedule 40 steel pipe table or the steel pipe friction tables also have the diameters on them um if you don't see that then it could just be uh the inches right but Generally speaking, they're gonna they're gonna put one of those keywords in there. They're generally not just giving you, um, you know, like a round number for pipe size. And one other thing I want to add to that is that for smaller pipes, you should be more vigilant about this, just in case, right? Like the validity or the importance of the question that you're asking is more relevant for smaller pipes because you'll notice that there's a delta between the nominal size and if you were to just assume that number for like a look at like one and a half inch pipe you might notice that it's like 1.6 or something like that so that can be significant when you think about like the area of the pipe 
But once you get to larger pipe sizes, and I would say from eight on up is probably what I would consider to be a larger size. It actually doesn't matter too much for a lot of calculations. You could almost just take eight, like the difference between the inside diameter for a nominal eight inch pipe and just using eight inches as the inside diameter. It's, it's going to be a negligible difference. So, I mean, it's fast enough to look it up and I think you should be in the habit of kind of doing it right. Um, you know, if you're fast at it, it's not going to be a, a big time difference, but yeah, small pipes, be, be vigilant, larger pipes. Don't worry about it too much, but you know, do a lot of practice and get fast at looking it up is, is my general advice.